Welcome back to the last video in our What If Tool mini-series. In the first video, James and I gave you an overview of the What If Tool. And in the second video, we did a deep dive of the data point editor. Here, we'll be focusing on the performance and fairness tab, using the same housing data set from the last two videos. This model predicts whether a house is worth more or less than $160,000. Let's get started. The first thing we see on the Performance and Fairness tab are various performance metrics for our model. The confusion matrix tells us the percentage of each class our model classified correctly and incorrectly. If we add the numbers on the top left diagonal, it'll equal our overall model accuracy, in this case 97%. This shows us that 50 out of 51 data points from our test set were correctly classified as over $160,000, and 47 out of 49 data points from our test set were correctly classified as less than $160,000. The model had very few false negatives and false positives. So far, we haven't changed the threshold slider. Sarah, do you want to explain what we can do with it? Sure. The threshold indicates your model's decision point between classes. In this case, any prediction above 0.5 will be classified as more than $160,000. Changing the threshold is one technique for optimizing your model's performance. To change it in the What If tool, we can adjust the slider. When we do this, you'll notice that our metrics change. In this case, increasing the threshold decreases overall accuracy, but also decreases our false positives. If we select single threshold from the optimization strategies, the What If tool will choose the threshold that yields the highest overall accuracy on the loaded data points. So, the lowest total of false negatives and false positives. For this model, it's still 0.5. This view shows us how our model is behaving across all data points. But what if we want to see how it's behaving across different slices of our data? That will help us understand if there's areas where it's treating subsets of data points differently. Sarah, do you want to show us how to slice by different features? Sure. Let's try slicing by garage type attached, which indicates whether the garage is attached to the house. Notice that houses with an attached garage have a higher likelihood that our model will value them at more than $160,000. Now let's imagine that we wanted our model to price houses with attached and unattached garages in the same way. In this example, we care most about having the same percentage of positive classifications across slices while still achieving the highest possible accuracy within that constraint. For this, we should select Demographic Parity as our optimization strategy from the Fairness section on the bottom left. Notice that our threshold sliders and accuracy metrics change when we set this strategy. What do all these changes mean? If we don't want the garage placement to influence our model's price, we need to use different thresholds for houses depending on whether the garage is attached. With these updated thresholds, the model will predict the house to be worth more than $160,000 when the prediction score is 0.99 or higher. Alternatively, a house without an attached garage should be classified as over $160,000 if the model predicts 0.52 or higher. What about other optimization strategies? We can use the equal opportunity strategy to achieve a similar percentage of correct predictions across each slice for the houses in our test data set that are worth more than $160,000 and equal accuracy will strive for similar accuracy across both slices. Finally, one more performance and fairness feature we should look at is changing the cost ratio. So far, all of our optimization strategies have tried to pick the best thresholds given that we care equally about false positives and false negatives. But this may not be the case for many models. For a model used in cancer screening, for example, you might want the model to avoid false negatives, meaning misdiagnoses, at the cost of having more false positives, which could then be screened out at the next level of testing. To update thresholds based on how you want your model to handle false positives and negatives, you can change the cost ratio. For example, setting the cost ratio to four means that we want to consider false negatives four times as costly as false positives. Then we can find the optimal threshold given this new cost ratio. We've covered a lot in this video. To recap, we looked at a few metrics for evaluating the performance of a model, including the confusion matrix and true and false positive rates. Then we looked at modifying the prediction threshold and analyzed how our model behaved across different slices of our data. Keep in mind that while this is a data set of houses, we'd want to do a similar analysis for other types of data, especially human-centered data. It's also important to note that we've shown just one strategy for improving the fairness of an ML model. There are many other methods available for this, such as augmenting training data and designing fairer cost functions for use at training time. For more resources and everything we showed, check out the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.